Does this make sense to you? It does. I think it does. Right? So now we've like got Like the a trickiest world. bit at this point is like specific terminology and just like learning mm. words that I don't know, you know. Mm. But there, so what we're going to do, locations, again, is going to have a list of, um, we don't want to call them characters, or do we want to call them characters or players or? Um, well, it depends on whether we do decide that the player character is going to be uh, in the same class or not. Because, um, yeah, I don't know, in terms of the... Um, so I wrote down every step I like enacted as I was playing my my board game version, um, and I ended up using the terms NPCs and PC because that's just from D and D. It's non-player characters and player characters. Um, okay, so do we want to rename that to NPC or well, I, well, let's let's just say. Um, Let's go that, and it's now. Because we could just use characters and player, honestly. Um, um, now, this is where, at this point, we're, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves a bit, but what we're asking now is... Um, Do we want to have uh, a, a parent class that's a player mm -hmm. and then child class? Um, is there much that's common between what you as a player and what other players do? Are they sufficiently different or do we inherit? I think they're pretty different. Because, um, I mean, because... Right. Well, let's let's just rename this to NPC. Pi. Is that what you had? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, we could just call them characters if that's easier. But no, no. I mean, it, so long as you. Um, so we'll, we'll put uh, non non playing. Character, character, or er? character, character. Yeah, I think it's character. And we we'll want a, another one, new file, and that's PC. Yeah. And we'll. Uh, I mean, the the tricky thing is that um, there's not much that the player character would inherit from the non-player characters the non-player characters just have a lot more sort of couched in them than the player character does we'll see how it emerges yeah so um now we want class do you want to just call it because we can call it whatever in this case pc yeah um I don't know why it's not doing the um, none now. Um, oh, it's upset about that. Why is it upset about that? Hmm. Oh, because we don't have self here. We have self in any. Let's see what happens. Um. So, what is it? DEF. So, um, DEF. Self. Oh, init. That's why. Ah, uh, that's because this doesn't go there, that goes here. And now, right, now it's happy. So here we just go um, print 
PC. PC constructor. And we're going to move to using a logger that comes with. Uh, okay, so I'm going to pip, pip install logging. I find satisfied logging. Hmm, is that is that? I don't know. It's logging. Everything stuff in the I don't know. Discarding. Could not find a version set as required for logging? Okay. Um, I will. Oh, is it logger? Uh, I'll, I'll see. Let's do a pip just so we've tidy. Pip un Not available, so I didn't install. Um, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that in a moment. That was just getting ahead of myself. So, um, and we go NPC. We really want that. My screen sharing. The Zoom. You are sharing your screen. It was get oh, get out of there. <laughs> I don't know yes. where you can see that. Yes, but, I am. Um, and so NPC constructor. Mm -hmm. Now we could um, put both of these inside of one file. Could we? But we can also separate them. Uh, really, all of these things are up to us. Mm -hmm. So in our world, we've decided um, we want to have self M, uh, M um, players, uh, NPCs, equals, and we'll have a list of them. And then we'll go self dot m npcs dot append and we're going to append a uh, actually um, let's just go npc non playing character equals np C um, we want to oh we want to import location and now we want to import from NPC import NPC so now we've got that and we can equals NPC and now we have a character okay and we're gonna append npc and then we want um, pc equals pc um we want to also why is that give me an error there oh because we don't want that from pc import pc and it's not a problem that the file and the class have the same name? No. Uh, well, they don't, actually, because I've got, see, the file, I've got world, and I've got world CLS. Yeah, well, because those ones make sense to me, but the, the NPC and the PC, it says from NPC, oh, NPC, NPC right? CLS. Like, uh, I should do that for that reason. I mean, I think it does work, but um, I'm not but sure. Just for clarity. Yeah, and that's why. And I and when I've got things that are uppercase, I put an under, underscore. So it doesn't become the same thing. Just so you can read the. Mm. 
happening more easily. Um, okay, so now we go to world and we want um, MPC class and PC class. And now we go self. And up the class. top, it's got those things now say from PC import PC comma PC underscore class. Oh, PC, yeah, we need to get rid of. Did it automatically do that? Did it automatically go? Oh, it you did. must mean that's pretty yeah, cool. It there you go. How smart is that? Oh, yeah. Um, so, and now PL. Oh, no. Um, NPC, NPC equals. Um, oh, no, I've already got the PC equals. Right. And now I go self dot underscore M. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, yeah, let's, let's just comment that for the moment. So, I, I mean, we haven't even really begun to even look at this, but we can see here we're creating, um, in here, when we do this, we're now going to be creating a non play character and we're going to put it into a list. This is, a, so this is just a list of things. And so you can have 10 non playing characters. Mm -hmm. And then the um, non-playing character, all characters are going to, oh, I know I'm sharing. We're going to have in here, um, self m name, because the character is going to have a name. And, um, and the player will do things. And so we're going to then go down here. So what's something a player would do a non-playing character would do what's something a non-playing character would do wait now i'm confused because we're in verb territory again okay um i mean the biggest thing they do is they talk right um converse reply. they yeah there we go reply and then we might have up here um, and, and that equals, um, and we might say that. Do, do you want a character name? <laughs> um, when you create a character, you have to give it a name. Okay. Right, so when we create a non-playing character, we're saying now that any non-playing character has to have um, a name so if we go back to our world all right and the way that you did that you made it in name so that every time i do it it'll just read it and go well what's the name given in this specific and so we, we've asked for non-playing character and this one we're going to call bob and if we really want to do it in a better way we go um and it's type string so as soon as you create a character, it's now going to have a name. And so we could then go um, uh, print self dot m name plus um, and then um, Plus reply. Ooh. Turns it into like a little, little line of script, like not coding script as in like stage script. Equals. Um, I hate you. <laughs> huh? Yeah. But um you'd have a up here you might have um self dot replies 
um, M replies equals right um, and right and now you've got a whole lot of replies. You might have um, M sarcastic yeah. replies equals, and then you might have now we would create a new file and we call it sarcastic replies.csv. What is a CSV file? Comma separated values, but oh. we don't even, we probably don't even need a, um, but we'll, 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 we'll do it just in case. All right. Well, actually, no, let's, let's just go replies. Um, rename. And we'll put that replies and here's replies.csv. Right. And so now, we have sarcastic. Right, 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 right. And right. now we've got um, angry. Right. 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 And so now we put in here. Um, why, did, why did angry go blue? I don't know. It's it's sort of, I, I don't know. It's it, It'll be the lintar. It's, even though it's a CSV file, it's doing some interpreting. But um, so that's a header, right? And then we've got sarcastic is um, good one. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Right, we can we can have a whole right. whatever how we or whatever your sarcastic ones want to be, and now we got uh, angry. Oh, <gasps> oh! <laughs> briefly a curse word. Um, actually, I think that I don't need the quotes around these. Oh, going to read it um, as because I'm going to get it as a uh, and now um, <laughs> right. So now we've got yeah. sarcastic and angry comments. Um, in our replies file. Mm -hmm. So now players are going to, non-playing characters, are going to want to get a hold of those list of replies. So um, is it part of it? Um, again, let's, let's go back to our um, existing code so import csv and i've got a config file and send notification i'm going to read in somewhere if i do a control f csv next file name equals read statement okay and I use try and now we'll just grab that. Try so, seems like not a specific enough verb to be a command. What does the try do? Right, so 
Um, was it? You can see, I don't remember everything. I just always go back and look. Import CSV. Oh, that should have been pretty obvious. Uh, I think it's yes. So that's actually part of the um, um, default library you get. Now, okay. what happens if you have more than one CSV file? Equals, uh, uh, and we called it uh, replies.csv. So now what we've got is if we, when and when we want to run it, let's say we, we mistyped this and the, the file doesn't exist and it tries to open this, this file and it's a CSV file. Um, and actually we'll go here. So um, that's going to just say that file doesn't exist or you mistype the name of it or something like that. This is going to try to do this. And it's so it, I've told it what the name is and I try to open it. Well, if the file doesn't exist, rather than the program just crashing, mm -hmm. we can have, um, we'd use a logger, but. Um, um so now oh ah uh, aha uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. do you know about that Oh, I didn't know about that. I was gonna. <laughs> that's that's Trixie. I thought you were gonna be forced to switch to double quote marks. No. So this slash, because of this quote character, is a it is something that the language uses. If I want to use it as just itself in a string, I have to tell it. And Don't so do that. If, if you right. put this slash in front of it, it says treat the next character as actually the character. There's a whole lot of control characters. And if you want to use any of them, you just go slash. Gotcha. And, and so now, so. If, and, it's, and it's backslash, not forward slash. Yeah. Okay. And just so now it. that is going to read in that file. And we've now got a set of... Uh, oh, we, we actually don't want to. This is going to be um, replies, not sarcastic replies. And inside of there, there's going to be sarcastic and angry replies. So, but this is happening in the constructor. So when the player comes in, it gets a name automatically, immediately, and that gets assigned. And then we try to open up the replies.csv file and read it all in. And then we've got, we've got a um, list of sarcastic and angry, angry replies that we can use. And, and we can, we've got that list. You can make it as long as you want, and then you could randomly select it. Cool. So you just generate a random number between uh, zero and n minus one, n being the number of replies there are, and then it'll pick that reply. Why minus one? Because it's zero to n minus one rather than one to n. Zero is the first element in the array is, is zero. Yeah. So that means that the last element is the number minus one. Oh. And this is this is a source of there's this huge you know, everyone knows about an out by one error. 
<laughs> and zero based or one based. So when you're using arrays and whatever, you need to, in VB6, it's one based arrays and C++ is zero based arrays. So you need to know whether you're writing N or N minus one. <laughs> right. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. But without getting it, we, that should now. Do we need see. to cut that other um, M sarcastic replies and just cut the sarcastic? Oh, or yes. is that one fine? No, that's right, because we haven't declared that. Um, all right. So now this, if we run, it hasn't, hasn't broken. Yay! But then by the time... And if we go back in here and we say in uh, world, instead of world dot, um, instead of print world dot run, well, we can still do that. Inside of here, we go self dot in MPCs dot, uh, and what did we call? We called it reply. Is that NPCs def reply okay we call it reply so there's a reply and oh okay we've got that's an that's an array npcs um zero dot what's going on here i'm not looking let's let's just get rid of Let's just comment this out. We're not going to have a array of players. We're just going to have one player to start with, right? And it's that. And we're not going to append that. We're just going to talk straight to Bob. Okay. Um, oh, and we want to we want to call that. Actually, we'll call that self dot. And uh, and we'll call that underscore m n. PC equals Bob, right? C dot uh, rip reply. Okay. <gasps> Bob said he hated me. Yay! It did a thing. And then we can go. Um, so what we could do is um, if we append Bob to the to the class, um, then we should be able to access Bob, but then we can also have Mary and mm. Pete and whatever. But um, so it, it has actually read these in. Mm. So we now have a list of replies. So let's let's just go in here for row in self dot underscore self dot underscore m replies. Ah, and we've got to put a uh, colon on the end. Um, print. So now that's in the constructor. So we've got an ordered dictionary. Why is it done as a dictionary? Oh, because it's a, um, and there's sarcastic, good one, angry, shut up. So, so there's, there's a set of rows in there and that's awesome. Angry, you're a butt face. Um, and that's read, and it's put the double quotes on there because that one's got the single, that's got a single quote in it. So that's awesome. So it had to put double quotes to get that single quote. Mm. But can you see what's happened there? Kind of. I mean, yes, the answer is yes. My next question was, how do you make it just pick one? So um, we've, we've now got an ordered dictionary and I probably don't, I probably don't want to read it in there. Well, I might use pandas to read this in, but we end up, we want to list 
in the end, what we want is not an ordered dictionary. Mm. Um, what we want is um, all of the sarcastic ones in one list and all of the angry ones in another. And then we can just go, we can just get a random number from the computer between a pseudo random number between zero and the number of ones in there. So in this case, it'd be between, between zero and one. And then um, reply and, and then go, I want a sarcastic one. And I want the randomly selected nth one from there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. But is that... I like, think it's making sense. So it's and shockingly I like, exciting to have Bob tell me that he hates me. <laughs> um, and and I I like to break my programs up into the lots of files. Mm. I find it's easier to have lots of files, and then you can come and go. Oh, hang on, what's the NPC? It's certainly making it easier for me to keep track of. <laughs> yeah. If all, can you imagine all of this in one file? Yeah, I I wouldn't be able to understand it. <laughs> and you'd be you'd be all over the place, but mm. because you know, yeah. Actually, that's yes. Yeah, that's actually angry. So there, there's these. Oh, it's an order. Oh, yeah. I'd have to look up how to use dictionaries. The default of um, I've I use, and again, if I was going to do this, um, I'd be jumping in and out of my previous code. So, um, where was that? File name equals so open it up for row and I've appended them and row I've got the last row of data. All right, so we can explicitly um yeah, we should be able to just go in here. God, geez, that's annoying. Um up, up, away, away. Um <laughs> non-playing character. Uh, but it's it's printed them all. Uh and then if we so we've we've printed them all and now print um, row, uh, no, print um, self dot m replies. And now we should be able to put zero. And let's see what it, let's see where that runs. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah. So that's it there. So I wrote that one. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So now. So it did the zero for both sarcastic and angry. And now I sh think I should be able to go sarcastic. I think. Hmm. Replies.csv doesn't exist. Why did it say that? Well, we did tell it to say that at some point. See there, except print file name plus doesn't exist. Oh, no, no, no. That's because it had an error here. It's, yeah. That's, that's referencing it incorrectly. Um, dictionaries use, oh, I need to look into how, to, oh, how, am I, how am I doing it in my program? Um, I mean, I'm getting caught up in it. I'm probably not going to use that much randomized dialogue anyway, but it's just interesting. I've appended that and it's retrieved the last data row. Okay, that's going to be a, um, and row equals for driving drives. I'm using row drive. Oh, mm. yeah, that's, that's a literal. Oh, well, it's drive use. All right. I'll, 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 um, I, I, I don't have all this stuff at my fingertip all yeah. the time. And so when I'm doing this, I kind of go, mm, how do I print that? But yeah, that's basically, uh, we could see that row zero, actually, I should be able to control Z. 
um, reply zero, it does have a, what happens if I go dot, reply zero should have another, um, chasm maybe. Yeah, now you see why it's doing this? No. Because it comes in here and it goes try. Mm -hmm. And if there's any error inside of here, it goes to the accept. Right. And so it means this line here is wrong. Because I can't, I can't do that. Right. So and, and I've only got one error handler. So really, if I did that, um, I moved that and after really here. Oh, no, control Z. I want it. There's scope with this open. While I remember I'm using that file, I need to have that. Okay, I've got pen rows. So now I can put except here. And then it's that. And then I move this stuff back. I highlight it, I go shift tab to get that to come back. No. So now if if it I don't have a try on this, it'll crash the program. No. <gasps> it just skipped it. Print. For row, it's, it's it's not printed those. Oh, that's part of the except. I need to de-dent that. It, the exception didn't run. Okay. Now, now we should crash. No? Hmm. Oh, I've got self-print reply zero. That works. And But if I went here and I went sarcasm, sarcastic right. and now let's see what happens hey right. ah it's a key error so what did i call it oh for growing out loud stop doing that up oh, lowercase oh Good one. <gasps> Look, it did it. It chose one. Hmm. I thought that was how we did it. Uh, just, yeah. You see, I don't, I, there might be gurus out here that just never make a mistake. I'm not one of them. But um, there you go. And so, what we could do is now, instead of having here and a reply equals I hate you. Uh, reply equals self dot underscore m replies and let's say one um, and sarcastic, quote, sarcastic and we'll get rid of this print for row and reader uh, we want that. We'll get rid of that because we don't need to print those all out again. Mm -hmm. And we can get rid of this one. We, we've made, we've learned what we needed to learn. And now. Yes. Yes. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Um, still saying good one. The first so one said that. that's awesome. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, oh, so yeah. it did oh, yeah. it. It's yeah. awesome. No. So you can see we now we're choosing randomly which sarcastic. Oh, and if we, neat. And if we went like this, ang ang free. 
Shut up. Yay! So is this actually making sense to you to some extent? Yes. Yes. So here we've taken, we've got mongoose, and all it does is it creates a world, it imports the world so it knows what it is, mm -hmm. it checks to see that if this is main, which it is, and then it creates a world. And it runs it. And then it runs it. And world comes in, and this is what it does to create it, and that's what it does to run it. And it imports locations and it imports NPCs. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Yes, it makes sense. And locations inside of here, you normally have um, self dot m, and we're going to here, we're going to want to know about players in locations. Okay. So from location in or from npc import location class right wait but isn't this location oh um from what am i doing yeah you're right npc import npc class and um m n p c s equals right right and and then we can go def add n p c And now we've got a way of adding a player to a location. Sweet. Sweet. So um, we have over here a new file and we call npcs.csv. Yay. And we have, we create a list of non playing characters. And they have attributes. So, yes. So we can have name, name, and what else, what else they're going to have? They have name. They have um, imposter. Yes, no. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether that goes there or not. Um, and they have affinity. And then previous to this. Oh, I know why it does it. Because it's a CSV file and this thing's smart, it changes everyone to a different color. And when you type them so underneath, when you can the color see matches with what it is. What? Oh, that's so handy. That's handy. I need that. Um, All right. So affinity. And then the other thing that I had in here in my early version of the game was the different dialogue scripts, um, the conversation mm. scripts. But we had a conversation about that and yeah, I think that there we we're doing that differently is, now is where we pull them from. Okay. Yeah. So, the so name, I, I think that's it now. What's their first, na the first one's name. The first one's name. I will tell you the first one's name. Red. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're, Red. they're all going to be named colors. <laughs> and let's say maybe, maybe imposter isn't, Maybe these things get attributed to them at time because they're not always this. But yeah. for the moment, yeah. let's just for the sake of this, we'll say that Red is an imposter. All righty. And his affinity. I guess starts at zero. Can you go into negative numbers in terms of oh. um, integers? Oh, okay. So these are really attributes of the of the NPC, not 
they um okay so, so what these we are things that, that i guess are attributes but they're not static attributes they yeah oh but then actually what was our initial um initialization and we can save these characters and there's you but you end up with a file like this for each when mm. you write the program oh um and i say blue is going to be the second character maybe and there, yes. no, and their affinity starts on zero. And when you save the game, it's going to write all these characters into here. And then, um, what is it? Yellow? I don't know. Did you have yellow? Yep. <laughs> and they're not, and their affinity is zero. So this is our startup condition. And then we can open up this CSV file and we can retrieve this information. We can iterate through that file and we can create players and add them to a lo to the location from this file. Okay. Okay. So also question. We talked a little bit earlier about um, the, the way that you can have like, the core version of a of a thing of an object and then use a copy of the object and change the copy of it rather than the original yeah. yeah would you do that with the npcs would you have them all start out as you know their name their imposter status and their affinity number all sort of being the base version and then just elsewhere apply the thing that that changes them to an imposter and changes their affinity. Well, yeah, what I would do is I'd start off and you'd have this list of characters and actually the world would probably have the characters and then the world would allow you to move a character from one location to another. Yeah, and the world would also, I presume, be the thing that goes, all right, we're going to randomise, we're, we're going to randomly choose two of these to change yes. their imposter no to an imposter yes right yeah. like so when we come into world we have a list of non-player characters um which would be this list um here right and we would add um we would um add so in here we'd open up the CSV file and it'd read in all the characters and their initial states from the CSV file. Mm -hmm. And then it would, it, and it now got a list of them and that list. And then as it does that, when you create them, you pass in the name and their, whatever, you know, their affinity and so forth. Um, and, and whether they are a um, an imposter, and um, and then so you now got multiple instances of NPCs, and the world has a list of them, and then the world can move them from. It's got a list of locations, and so you create more than one location, and you and and location has got a name, mm -hmm. and you you say this is the lunchroom, and this is the surgery, or the sick bay or, or whatever yeah and now you've got a list and they've all got names and then you can move a character so you on, on um location inside a location um dot pi add npc so we, we can add one and then def uh remove np C and we go self because we've always got to have self in in NPC uh, maybe and then you'd inside of here you would um, um, inside of here you do what it takes to remove that character right. So you'd remove them from the list. Yeah. I think 
that makes sense. So let's go here and we'll go. Our message is going to be um, first uh, session. Um, that, that's probably all we need. Mm -hmm. And now I just click on that because it's all hooked up and works. <gasps> it's now loading it up to GitHub. Oh, no, now it's um, saving it. So it's actually doing, there's quite a bit because we had, uh, you know, we've, we've added, we, we did the pandas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so now it's done that. And now I go push. And um, it's going to take whatever amount of time it takes to put all the stuff up on your on GitHub. Done. So now we go to here and we go to um, here. There's probably a quicker way of getting near repositories. And we go among us. Updated 19 seconds ago. Boom, look at it. Yay. And if we click on that, it's got it there. <gasps> Yay. And you can clone that. Heck yes. And so to clone it, you need that. But I, I will um, add you. You need to create an account. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think we need to waste time. There is tutorials. If you just uh, Google create GitHub account, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that I'll be able to figure it out. Sure, you'll be able to work that much out. And um, um, then when you've got that, uh, once you've got an account, let me know what it is. Mm -hmm. And I can, um, if you go into um, the um, settings and down the bottom with red all around it, the danger zone. <gasps> Good title. I can change the um, visibility, but I can also um, uh, give me permissions. Data sponsorships projects inside of here i can um share it with you cool um i looked at it the other day i don't like i said i don't do this all the time but i can um set up somewhere in here i can um uh grant you permission and once i've done that you'll be able to just download uh, you, you you also Install, uh, uh, install Git. Git is the program. GitHub is a hub for Git. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so you need to download and install Git. And I, I only download. There's a graphical interface for it, but I've only. I just get. I just download the the uh, non-graphical one. And once you've got Git installed on your computer. You also will want to install Visual Studio, Studio Code. code. Um, again, and you don't it doesn't matter where you install that mm -hmm. um, specifically, um, but uh, because you can just install it. And you want to install Python, and I've I've got on mine. Um, I swear, ooh, that that might be a problem. I'm using this computer and I don't think I've got Python on the root directory on this one. Uh, no, we might have, we might have a bit of trouble. So far we haven't done any imports. So the virtual environment isn't critical yet. Right. Um, there's a reason to use virtual environments and there's, they, they come with their own problems. Right. Um, but we'll work our way around it. Maybe at the moment, um we might not use a virtual environment because it doesn't 
Leave it with me and I'll think about it. All right. And I may have to install. Um, You're the Python fearless leader. On a different, in a different location on this computer. Right. And create a new virtual environment. Um, but so far, we've not. Um, um, Uh, that gives me a list of all the programs that have been installed. And actually, there you go. So what happened was, um, and so I don't need. At the moment. And I'm going to remove it. So Pip successfully started installing Pandas. And it installed these dependencies, mm -hmm. um, Python date util, pi tz, that's pi time, time zones um, and whatever, but it failed to do pandas for some reason. And so if you type pip freeze, it shows all the dependencies that have been installed. Mm -hmm. And it also shows you the versions. So now if I look at, um, freeze again, NumPy is going to be not there. Um, so I'll leave it with me. I'll have to think my way through this. And, and there is stuff I'm doing now with sharing programming that I've not had to do before. Uh -huh. So, you know, honestly, there's, there's things to learn. But we'll be able to learn them. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. That's probably enough for a day. I think we've done a good job, personally. I mean, you did most of the <laughs> the heavy lifting, but I feel like I learned things. I feel like it's neat because it's it's shaping up to, um, in many ways, resemble the stuff that I did here yeah, in well, terms of, like, what was the first thing I had to do? Well, I had to lay down a big bit of paper. What was the second thing I had to do? I had to draw locations on that bit of paper. What was the third thing I had to do? I had to make a bunch of character cards that I could put in those locations. Like it, it maps out very yeah. similarly. Well, that's the whole point of doing <laughs> That's what the whole it's design process is It's just really satisfying about. seeing it happen, seeing it fall into place. And, and the thing is we had to... Um, we had to go through all that stuff because otherwise you would have been at a clue what I was talking about now. Yeah. If we'd not yeah. been through all that other stuff, you wouldn't have had a clue. And, and, um, uh, and I, if I'd sat down here before we'd done all that other stuff and started doing that, what would you <sighs> like? I just, it would be so, so overwhelming. Can you imagine? Cause I'm already like, all this session has been me like trying to learn these like self in like all, all of these little bits and pieces um, that if I was trying to also grasp the shape of the entire thing at the same time, that would be a nightmare. Yeah. And, and if you were trying to wrestle with the idea of what, what a class is and yeah. And, and so forth. So we've worked to this place. And I think that this vindicates your choice uh, in that um, you, um, this vindicates your choice um, that this, you were okay for this. Mm. I mean, it didn't hurt to do that little bit of play around before. No, not at all, but. But um, this, and then so it did, how long did that take, really? I mean, a lot of this was just talking at the beginning. Yeah. How long yeah. did the code take? The code itself, and even then, because you, you also get to cut down on time that was like, oh, let's go and look and find where that one is in this other thing and, you know, whatever. Like, the, like there well, was... Well, that is, to me, part of the coding. That's part of the coding, you reckon? Yeah. Oh, um, all, yeah, all but it didn't, it didn't take very... No, in, I mean... In the grand scheme of things... Um, the and coding really, was not a huge portion of it. You know, if you go in here, um, this sort of thing I do all the time, mm -hmm. like all the time. Um, just on, like I said, Stack Overflow, over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And and for me, I don't even try to be the gun programmer that just can type without even thinking about it. 
there's too many things. And every time I do something, a uh, program, like I was showing you, I'll, I'll add this. Um, um, I'm writing this program to, to do these emails. And um, so these are, these are emails that show, no, that's not the email I was after. All right, this one. Um, so the, 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 I'm writing, writing a program at the moment that this is an instrument, Eddie is an instrument that we've got. And um, this is just saying that spectrometer scanning and that the laser voltage of these, and this is the hard drive use. I've got a fortnightly meeting. And, um, and this is hard drive percentage use and so forth. But writing the code, I'd never use, this is using a library that I just went, uh, pip install matplotlib, and it lets me draw all these graphs. Now I've done a lot of these graphs before, so I'm quite familiar with them, but I never, never generated a pie graph before. So yesterday, or I think it was, um, I was just mucking about trying to, uh, and so I'm Googling matplotlib pie chart and, and it came up and it shows the syntax that I need to, to create a pie chart. And so, and then I mucked about with it and there they are. So I just, I, I just. Constant learning. Yeah. And, and I don't even, it's not, I'm not even trying to learn it all mm. or remember it all. Mm. But there are and certain clearly things. if that was the first time you ever had to do a pie chart, um, you, it's not something that you need to memorize. If you ever need to do a pie chart again, you can go back into your code <laughs> and use it. And, yeah. And, but. I do bookmark certain things sometimes. There's a guy, Corey Schaefer, mm -hmm. um, on YouTube, and he is brilliant. Um, YouTube. Uh, he hasn't been posting for a while. I don't know. Okay, don't judge YouTubers who don't post for a while. There is just a whole pile of... Um, you know, how do you install time dates, missing values, indexes, scatter plots? You know, if you want to learn how to, you can learn Python from this. And of course, the ones you, you start with conditionals and Booleans, dictionaries. So I should be watching the dictionaries one because I was using a dictionary. <laughs> Cre creating classes, class variables, you know, and seriously, this guy, Corey, oh, he's got a dog apparently. But you know, the, you go in here and and there's there's stuff on it in, in st getting started with PIP, start and getting started with virtual environments. Why would you choose? Now, um, I haven't watched that one. Maybe I should. But that's going through the stuff about virtual environments, getting started with PIP. Um, all of these. There's so much on here and he does a really good job of showing you like forget watching our stuff, just watch all these videos and you'll learn how to program Python. But of course he's doing it in a different way yeah, and for a different audience, but Linux on windows, you know, there's all sorts of stuff, but this channel is he, very informative and I really like his stuff. So, um, I, I constantly go and watch things like that, but I'm on Stack Overflow all the time. And I'm sitting here, I've got a monitor there and I've got a monitor there. And the one I'm sharing the one screen, um, but on the other screen, if I'm programming, I've got this here. And on the other screen, I've got my um, um, web browser and it's got six tabs open at different things on um, different, uh, stack overflow and and whatever and I'm just constantly googling how do I do that how do I do that how do I do that and I don't remember it all I just look it up the important thing is I know enough to solve those problems if you start cold and try to replicate this you'd probably find um, you'd probably find it reasonably tricky I, I, I've had to do a fair bit of work to to know what some of these errors look like and so forth right 
but I don't know it all. I, and you saw while we we're going through that, there were things that I went, mm, hang on, how do I reference that? And oh, it's a dictionary. I normally use lists, and uh, and I could use pandas for that, and and I know how to use pandas, and but there's all these design decisions. But like, um, you know, this is a start. Yeah, and you know what? No one died, and nothing exploded. Didn't even didn't even crash the computer. Could barely even crash the program when we tried. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, that's because I put in a try <laughs> to handle it. Um. So um, maybe I'll stop recording now. Mm. Goodbye, viewers. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. Um, yeah, we probably should do that. <laughs> it's still, re they it's don't still need recording. It. It's recording now. Stop this. All show. right. Well, then, farewell, good people of the internet. <laughs> And of course, the big question is how many, do, where, if we break this, do we break it or to just put one mammoth out and people can choose how much of it they watch in a session? It's I don't a know. good question. I don't know. I don't know the answer. <laughs> um, but I will, I will stop recording now. So why that stuff?